With no full-time residents, extreme weather conditions, and huge skyscraper-like icebergs, Antarctica is one of the most fascinating continents on Earth. A visit to this sweeping frozen desert is guaranteed to be an unforgettable journey, allowing you to follow in the footsteps of great explorers from the past. So, if you've been dreaming of an exciting and unforgettable adventure, a voyage to Antarctica will certainly deliver. But you might want to see these videos before you make your decision. 15 Unsettling Discoveries in Antarctica? Nobody can explain. Lost Soviet Cruiser Karvonchanka, Russian for Women of Kharkov, is a model of an Antarctic off-road vehicle made in the 1950s in the Soviet Union. Based on a tractor platform and similar to a tank, two of them were delivered to Antarctica in 1959 and reached the South Pole. And now they stand as a monument not far from the Russian Antarctic Station progress. By the 1950s, the Soviet Union, as well as other nations, had begun active research in Antarctica. As more expeditions followed, the explorers realized that the tractors they were using wouldn't be enough. A new type of vehicle was required, one that could withstand these incredibly harsh conditions but also provide safe and comfortable accommodation for the expedition group. And this amazing vehicle was the solution they were looking for. The massive Explorer was over 13 feet high and 11 and a half feet wide with a length of almost 28 feet. The cabin was almost the size of a studio apartment and could accommodate eight people. Inside, a small kitchen, a bedroom, and a restroom, apart from the control section for the driver and navigator. There were also a separate workshop which made this vehicle a mobile lab as well. By 1975, the upgraded 2 replaced the original version and continues to operate to this day. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. They found in Antarctica what no one was supposed to see. A shipwreck literally raised from the freezing waters cemented in by ice. Shouldn't a shipwreck be at the bottom of the sea? Not all the time when you're in Antarctica. The thing about this continent's harsh below freezing climate is that often ships get wrecked by being actually frozen in the ice as it forms in colder parts of the year like it was sealed in cement. And unless you're an icebreaker vessel that can crunch through thick, the ship will be locked in place until the ice thaws. Even worse, the ice can crush a ship. One of the world's most famous ships, called Endurance, suffered that fate over a hundred years ago. The wreck of the Endurance, which carried explorer Ernest Shackleton to the edge of Antarctica in 1915 before being crushed by ice and sunk, was recently discovered almost 10,000 feet below the surface. This mystery ship, however, was literally lifted by the iceberg to be forever preserved and locked in this ice cliff. But what happened to the crew? What's the story behind this doomed journey? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below using hashtag Sweet Topic. Millions of Nests Recently, a research icebreaker discovered the most extensive fish breeding colony discovered to date. At 1,600 feet below the Weddell Sea sea ice, the colony was found to cover at least 92 square miles of the seafloor. That's an area one-third larger than Washington, D.C. Over 12,000 active nests were filmed. Many fish create nests, but until now, researchers hadn't found many ice fish nesting near each other. Even the most social species of nesting fish had been found to gather only in the hundreds. This new one has an estimated 60 million active nests. The ship was cruising between the Antarctic Peninsula and the main continent. Part of that work involved surveying seafloor life. To do this, they slowly towed a device that recorded video as it was gliding just above the ocean bottom. It's also used sound to map seafloor features. At one site under the Filchner ice shelf, ice floating in the Weddell Sea, one of the teammates noticed something circular nests kept showing up on camera. They belonged to Jonah's ice fish. These fish are only found in the Southern Ocean and Antarctic waters. In fact, they've clear blood full of antifreeze compounds. Statue in the middle of nowhere. It's not called the Pole of Inaccessibility for nothing. Six decades ago, Soviet explorers were the first to make it to an unlikely place. Antarctica's Pole of Inaccessibility, the continent's farthest point in all directions from the surrounding seas. In 1958, a team of 18 men set out for the Pole of Inaccessibility, dragging tractor trailers loaded with equipment and prefabricated buildings behind them. 
After reaching their destination, they began building a small station that included a hut for four people, a radio shack, two 65-foot radio antenna towers, and a set of meteorological instruments. A plastic bust of linen was erected on top of the hut, pointing towards Moscow. But the team soon realized that the station was too remote for permanent use, so they left after only 12 days. An aircraft landed on a makeshift airfield near the station and picked up four researchers while the rest evacuated by sled. The Russians returned to the site for one last time in 1967. The next visit wasn't until 2007, 40 years later, when a British team became the first to reach the pole of inaccessibility station without mechanical support. The buried building and the lonely bust, along with a plaque commemorating the conquest of the Pole of Inaccessibility by Soviet Antarctic explorers, is now a designated historic monument. <laughs> Abandoned Whaling Station Once British sailors were a big part of the whaling industry in the Southern Hemisphere, now only rusting buildings and ship skeletons remain, where once thriving whaling stations were. It's not somewhere you would ever like to be alone. Rusty steel chimneys lie collapsed across the roadways. Power plants and dormitory blocks lie half smashed, their innards spilling out through the walls. Cast iron beds and baths, piping and wiring, cushions and mattresses all now leaking into the freezing air. Some of the huge steel cylinders of the whale oil tanks, 30 feet high and 30 feet across, have had their sides folded in, as if by a giant hand. But these are just the effects of time and the brutal winds of the Southern Ocean. In the decades following its closure, recent efforts have been made to restore the abandoned whaling station and clean up debris from the rest of the site in order to make it safe for visitors. But still, the winds that hurl off the mountains of this sub-Antarctic island make the whole place creak and groan. Rusted corrugated sheets screech against their fixings, doors slam open and shut, and the ventilator cows at the giant processor plants still turn in the wind as they've done since the place was finally abandoned and left to the elements in 1965. Haunted Huts In 1899, 10 men on an expedition rolled out an entire Antarctic winter in these structures, which they'd assembled from prefabricated segments. Inside, the men not only lived but also worked in a darkroom and taxidermy studio on the expedition's mission to document the continent. The only private space his men had was their own bunk. The size of the hut meant that they were essentially stuck in their bunks for the whole winter. For decades after the original expeditions, this hut and others like it sat mostly full of snow and ice, which had the effect of preserving them long beyond their intended lifespan. Could they be haunted? Only the folks behind the restoration would know. The restoration work involves shoring up the huts, weighed down by snow and ice and weathered by the Antarctic winds, and attending to the objects inside. A total of 62 specialists, experts in paper, timber, textile, and metal conservation from 12 countries contributed to the project. The trio of bases are all located on Ross Island and include Cape Royds Base, Cape Evans, and Hut Point. Looking ahead, a team is committed to upholding them and will continue the maintenance of the historic sites. Ghost Yacht, also called Endless Sea, Marsum Finn was a Brazilian yacht that sank at Maxwell Bay of Ardley Cove, Antarctica, about 750 miles south of the tip of South America. It became known as the Ghost Boat for a little while. Owned by a well-known Brazilian journalist and entrepreneur, the yacht had four people on board when it sank. The crew was busy shooting a documentary off the Antarctic coast when a strong wind of over 60 miles an hour caught the boat, pushing it against the ice. Trapped in the frost, the crew launched a radio mayday that was received by the Chilean Navy stationed on the frozen continent. When the Navy's boat finally managed to get closer, the filmmakers immediately jumped on board and finally escaped. Everything went well for the people, but not for the boat. As you can see, it could not be recovered easily. The icy water that entered the hull then froze, expanding and sinking the yacht, which ended up at the bottom of the shallow bay, just 20 feet deep. The owner eventually managed to get back to the boat's position and when the weather conditions allowed it, buoys were inflated, gradually lifting the yacht that had been underwater for almost a year. And the ghost yacht was rescued. Arctic Military Base 
This new base is built to house around 150 soldiers and is designed to ensure that Russia's military fleet can be autonomous and self-sufficient. It's all part of what leaders describe as an effort to bolster Moscow's presence in the Arctic. Mission accomplished. The base has what the Russians describe as a state-of-the-art radar station to monitor the movements of ships and aircraft. And Russia recently expanded the runway at this air base on the archipelago to over 11,000 feet long, meaning it can land and refuel most of its military aircraft, including jet fighters, to patrol the polar skies. Experts say the melting of Arctic sea ice, generally attributed to climate change, is making the polar seas more accessible for shipping. That can make it easier to prospect for untapped energy and minerals in the region. Construction on the base, known as the Arctic Trefoil, was completed in 2017. It lies just 160 miles east of the easternmost part of Norway's Svalbard archipelago, and as you can see, it's built on stilts to help withstand the extreme cold. The base is self-sufficient in electricity and equipped with a clinic, library, chapel, gym, and cinema too. Glacier Tongue The Erebus Glacier in Antarctica comes down from Mount Erebus and protrudes off of Ross Island, forming a six-mile-long ice tongue, a long and narrow sheet of ice projecting out from the coastline. The Erebus Ice Tongue is the serrated, blue-rimmed knife extending into snow and ice-covered McMurdo Sound, and it varies in thickness from 160 feet at the snout to 980 feet at the point where it's grounded on the shoreline. And it looks like a lot of fun to explore. Plus, it's a dynamic structure subject to a host of internal and external stresses which affect its shape, size, and durability. Ice tongues emerge when a glacier ice steam flows rapidly into the sea or lake, usually in a protected area. For instance, Capes Evans and Royds extending from Ross Island protect the Erebus ice tongue from the open waters of the Ross Sea. It's the perfect ice storm, so to speak. When the sea ice from McMurdo Sound thaws in the summer, the ice tongue floats on the water without thawing, and when the ice around the tongue melts in the summer, waves of seawater constantly batter the edges of the tongue carving very elaborate structures in the ice, sometimes producing deep caves, and in the winter the sea freezes once more around these new shapes. <laughs> Strange Footprint Phenomenon What's up with these tiny, icy footprints? They grow up out of the snow like flowers. Actually, this is the phenomenon of raised footprints. It happens in regions that experience weeks of cold, dry, windy weather. Hopefully for its maker, it's heading somewhere warm and secure, because by the time you see these footprints, there's nothing you can do for the person who made them. They take weeks to form, because it requires more than a gale to blow away snow, raised footprints are often taken as an indicator of potential avalanche danger, and they're the product of a very specific environment. Since snowfall and rain can spoil the print, the weather has to be dry, and there has to be constant, miserable wind. As someone walks, their feet tamp down the snow until it's extremely hard in comparison to the snow all around it. The snow has to be loose and dry so that the foot can sink in and compress the snow until it's hard. That's the strange footprint phenomenon in a nutshell. As the wind sweeps across the area, it whisks away loose particles of snow. It takes considerably longer to whisk away the compressed snow of the prints, so that sticks around. You can track someone by their prints weeks after they make them. Towing Icebergs Would you believe that a wealthy businessman with a vision wanted to tow an iceberg from Antarctica to the Arabian Gulf? In fact, there are corporations that specifically design, produce, and deliver equipment for what it's referred to in the biz as ice management operations, so the technology actually exists for towing icebergs. The rich visionary believed that having a large body of ice floating along the coast of the United Arab Emirates could provide the country with fresh, drinkable water. In theory, sounds like a great idea. The ambition of the inventor and entrepreneur had been to transport an iceberg from Antarctica. The journey, expected to take around 10 months, would see the iceberg reach its final position of the UAE's Fujara coast. The iceberg would be selected by satellite and can measure a mile wide and a patent-pending metal belt would be used to prevent the iceberg from breaking up during its long journey. However, it could lose up to 30% of its mass before reaching warm Arabian waters. 
If it all goes to plan and the trials are successful, then an iceberg could be headed to the Gulf Coast. The frozen behemoth would cost up to $200 million to transport, according to preliminary calculations. <laughs> Crack in the ice This ginormous iceberg measures roughly 490 square miles and is nearly 500 feet thick. The iceberg, more than 20 times the size of Manhattan, actually split off from Antarctica. The huge chunk of ice broke off the Brunt Ice Shelf, almost a decade after scientists first detected the growth of vast cracks in the ice. And though some people would be quick to point the finger at climate change for such major events, scientists have made it clear that these cracks in the ice could also be natural occurrences. It's just a massive step in the life cycle of an ice shelf. It grows until it's too big to support itself, collapses, and then the whole process starts again. The Brunt Ice Shelf routinely breaks off icebergs, but not like this. Experts hadn't seen an event like this since 1971. Warning signs of an imminent iceberg started before when one crack, called the North Rift, emerged and started heading towards another major crack roughly 21 miles to the northeast. The rift crept further in that direction, moving at about half a mile per day, before widening substantially. And incredibly, it happened in the span of hours, eventually causing the iceberg to cut itself loose. <laughs> Rectangle Iceberg The footage was captured by scientists working with a NASA mission that monitors the way polar regions are responding to climate change. Who knew that icebergs could be so rectangular? Apparently, not the internet. Aerial footage of icebergs as flat, square, and smooth as an ice sheet set the internet aflame with rumors of alien visitors and chainsaw-wielding glaciologists. Despite their usual appearance, tabular icebergs like these are actually completely natural. The researchers saw them floating off the coast of northern Antarctica during a survey of the region's polar ice. The biggest was about one mile across. Though, like all icebergs, only about 10% of it's visible above the waterline, meaning most of its square-shaped bulk lies underwater. Icebergs detaching from the edges of these ice shelves are like corners of a sheet of office paper, getting cut with a pair of ocean scissors. Right after the cut, when the iceberg detaches, the edges will often be perfectly square. These flat-topped and angular ice shapes are typically wider than they are deep and can span hundreds of miles across. But as these tabular bergs float out to sea, any sharp corners are quickly ground down in collisions with other icebergs, or they melt slowly away. <coughs> Creepy Ice Holes The name comes from the word cryo, which means ice, and conite, which means dust. And these creepy ice holes were first observed and explained by a Swedish explorer when he traveled on Greenland's ice cap in 1870. They're called cryoconite. Sometimes the surface of glaciers exhibits these peculiar water-filled cylindrical holes of varying sizes. At the bottom of these holes, there are usually deposits of dark-colored sediments. The rest is filled with meltwater. Cryoconite dust is made of combination of small rock particles, soot, and microbes, which is deposited and builds up on snow, glaciers, or ice caps. Cryoconite may also contain dust from faraway continental deserts or farmland particles from volcanic eruptions, or power plant emissions. These dark materials absorb heat from sunlight and cause the ice beneath them to melt, forming long cylindrical holes. As the cryoconite sinks, it creates a black layer at the bottom while continuing to melt deep down into the ice. And during summer, these holes frequently contain water and thus provide a niche for cold-adapted microorganisms and tiny animals to thrive. <laughs> Icy Fingers It's pretty safe to say that none of us are ever going to go diving in the waters off of Antarctica anytime soon. But if you ever do, there's a chance that you may see this. Beware! Don't get too close, it's definitely one of the more bizarre sights in nature and it's called a brinicle. Imagine an icicle hanging on your house's roof gutter, except that a brinicle's length may be measured in feet instead of inches and instead of rainwater, it's formed from a super salty seawater solution called brine. It forms a hollow tube that projects downward from the ice pack on the ocean surface, and it's known as the icy finger of death. We'll explain. Brinicles form between when seawater along the ocean surface freezes to form ice. It releases salt. 
That increases the salinity of nearby water, which in turn lowers its freezing point so that it stays liquid even though it's really, really cold. Then it starts to sink towards the ocean floor in a swirling vortex of doom. This rare nature event freezes and kills everything around it once it touches the seabed. As it grows, it catches various bottom-dwelling creatures around it. They become encased in ice, completely frozen. Pools of super-cold brine may also form and remain where the brinicle touched down. The so-called black pools of death can also be deadly. <coughs> Alien meteorite Scientists found what they believe to be signs of microbial life in a meteorite determined to be of Martian origin. It was first discovered in 1984 by geologists riding snowmobiles through the Allen Hills region of Antarctica. And this meteorite would go on to become one of the most studied rocks in history. It reinvigorated the field of astrobiology, rekindled NASA's interest in Mars, and changed how some scientists think about life itself. Scientists think it was originally formed 4 billion years ago on Mars and landed on Earth about 13,000 years ago. At that point, magnetite particles like the ones in the meteorite were not produced. As such, the study team members said these crystals might constitute evidence of the oldest life forms known, with profound implications for the presence of life in the universe. Cosmic impacts on Mars can be powerful enough to blast rocks off the red planet, a fraction of which crashes on Earth, the Moon, and other bodies in the solar system. So it's possible. Unfortunately, scientists proved otherwise. The majority of planetary researchers and astrobiologists ultimately decided it did not contain evidence of life on Mars. Even if the Allen Hills meteorite did not conclusively prove existence of life on the red planet, the research did benefit science. And hopefully these videos benefited you. It's hard to imagine Antarctica being anything but ice, but as we've shown you, there's so much more. So like and subscribe if you can't get enough and share this with your friends and family.